Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we are joined by Dr. Bob Peel, uh, who's uh, a naturopathic physician as well as an expert on what I call the logical uh, synthetic analysis of what's going on. He's written several quite remarkable books. The website, the secret sect, sect.com, and uh, your latest book. Uh, tell us all about them, and let's do a post, I call it selection, autopsy, what's going on and where we're going. Okay, as far as all about them, yes, you're right. I've got uh, two, well, three prophetic books, but the two that would be relevant today. And one uh-huh. is uh, one is about 2012 and the rise of the secret sect, which basically warned that a lot of things are going to happen. Uh, the book came out three years ago, and this did not happen on your show, but somebody else's radio show I did uh, about three years ago, she called me actually a traitor uh, because of what I said was going to happen to the United States. Oh, really? And what, yes, and what's interesting about that is at the time, world events had lined up with, oh, maybe five or six predictions in the book. Right. And then um, I sent her something later, world events lined up with about 15 or 16. So now she almost acts like I walk on water because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the world events had lined up with 24 predictions in the, in the 2012 book. Well, but you're the a other, very logical person. You're, you're actually quite remarkable. Your intellect is able to look at patterns and anomalies, check the Bible, and then find the references in the regular literature, historical literature, or other documents, and call it together and say, look, all of these prophecies, not just Christian, but prophecies from Hopi and other religious groups, uh, line up with a number of world events that are actually happening as we speak. And uh, when you look at them, you can lay out a timeline that tells us where we're going. And now with the reselection of ob- the abominator, I call him, just like instead of the terminator, we'll call him the abominator, uh, we're on a rail I call a fast track to hell. Well, well, the other book that uh, you alluded to is the other one I've, I've got out, Barack Obama Prophecy and the Destruction of the United States. Now, that's available at uh, BarackObamaProphecy.com and, of course, Amazon.com. And it's also available on Amazon Kindle. Well, that one, of course, uh, I, did, I wrote this book. It came out in September. And, of course, it was popular when it came out. But, of course, with the, ele- the election or the re-election, if you, if you will, uh, it's become more popular as well. And right. one, of the, one of the things that's interesting, and uh, maybe we'll get a chance to talk about some of this later in the book, but as I mentioned, uh, two dozen, at least, world events lined up with at least two dozen predictions in my 2012 The Rise of the Secret Sect book. Well, a dozen of them have to do with the, the Obama administration, and those are all listed in the back of the uh, Barack Obama book. Um, but what I kind of thought we would go into in terms of news, and we'll go into that with the election, is really this, this fiscal cliff that uh, the government has uh, put itself on. Uh, right. That, that, and of course, this is a, by the way, this is a dialectic that's been used in Europe to expand the debt and cause further destruction. And uh, you say you have a prophetic analysis. Now, by the way, uh, this is fresh. I haven't had a chance to talk to you about this, so I'm going to be probably just as shocked as the people listening to this analysis that you're going to present. Oh, I don't think so. Not, not what I'm going to say this time. This, this, this I, I know. I'm, much I'm, just being, I'm, being, I'm being facetious, but those people who haven't heard the program before, <laughs> those people who haven't heard the program before, they're going to go, ah, no, 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 that's not going to happen, just like your host that actually did, say, thought you were a traitor because you said these things were going to happen. Uh, you know, sorry. <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, well, actually, the, the fiscal cliff is actually very consistent uh, with actually two of the predictions in my 2012 book, and which are also in uh, the Barack Obama book, which was uh, that I said that uh, the, the U.S. would increase debt and that we would um, basically cut defense spending. And what, what the fiscal cliff is, and that's an interesting term, uh, actually, uh, Ben Bernanke, the uh, Federal Reserve Chairman, is the one who came up with this term. And... It's kind of interesting how it, how what what we faced. Barack Obama made a couple of deals with Congress, and basically to extend what everybody calls the Bush era tax cuts, and those tax cuts were extended until December 31st of this year. Uh, of course, that means they're going to be over soon. The the Republicans, I think, thought that they would uh, retake the, the the Senate and, and, and the presidency, and therefore they could just ignore what agreement that they got themselves into. Well, as you know, with last week's election, they didn't do that at all. Uh, the, the Senate is in full Democratic control, slightly stronger, actually. Uh, Barack Obama got reelected. And, and by the way, uh, the title of your second book again is Barack Obama... Prophecy and the Destruction of the United States. Yeah. And so yeah. anyway, so this fiscal cliff idea, and then there's one more piece of this cliff. And that was back in the summer of uh, 2011, they passed this thing called the Budget Act of 2011. 
And basically they said, okay, the debt keeps going up a lot. Well, that was something, as you know, I predicted in writing years ago. The, the debt's right. going up a lot, so what we're going to do is we're going to stop this from happening. So what we're going to do, we'll, we'll allow the government to increase the debt for another year or two. But what we're going to do is we're going to put out a, a budget panel, and they're going to come up with some results. And we're right. going to agree on this. And if we don't agree on this, we're going to cut defense spending and other spending so bad starting January 1st, 2013, that nobody will put up with that. And therefore... This won't, you know, this really won't happen. We're, we're going to force ourselves to compromise, is what you're trying to say. Yes. So instead, of course, and the Republicans, when they did this, thought, okay, they thought they were being fiscal respons- fiscally responsible. And they thought when they did this that everything was going to work out well, but they also thought they were going to win. Well, they didn't win, and so now they've got a situation where Barack Obama has, in my opinion, he's holding most of the cards. He wants taxes to go up. Okay, and if he does nothing, taxes go up. He's indicated before he thinks the United States is too strong militarily, it has too much influence in the world, and so if uh, he doesn't do anything for the budget cuts, defense gets slashed. Mm-hmm. Defense is so gets slashed so much that Barack Obama's own Secretary of Defense, uh, Leon Panetta, said these cuts were, quote, unthinkable, and they were doomsday cuts. But if, if uh, nothing happens in the next uh, seven weeks or so, that will go into effect. So Yeah, they'll go into effect. Here's the effects. Number one, paychecks will stop going to the military. Procurement or equipment that's already in production and actually in the long production lines that sometimes take several years, like the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, will stop. Supply lines to actually keep our Navy operational will stop. Uh, we're, people that are actually deployed in the field at 167 bases around the world will stop. I mean, we're talking about basically uh, deciding to, to to make ourselves so vulnerable, any nation could attack us after this fiscal cliff, and we will not be prepared, military or chain of command or supply lines, to even wage a war in multi fronts or even one front uh, or even stop terrorism. It will be unconscionable what will happen. This is, and, and I'm not a warmonger, but his idea to build down the military 90 percent and to cut and to, to do this, and they knew darn well what was going to happen. And Bonner uh, said he's not going to allow the increased rate of taxes, so he's going to allow caps on uh, on on deductions. Well, it's just the same effect. But if you took 100% of the economy of the people owning over 250,000 in this country, you'll run the government for 93 days only, and they're going to run out of money. In other words, you got three months, and then you're screwed. I mean, uh, and tattooed, literally. So that, so, so this idea that the fiscal cliff is going to force them to collaborate and that the collaboration by taxing the so-called wealthy is going to solve it is not, not going to work. I absolutely agree with you. It's not going to work. I absolutely, uh, we, we have a few minor points of dis- disagreement. Well, uh, it, it won't weaken the U.S. immediately. I mean, in, no, no, in, no, uh, not immediately. Right. It'll take a while. You, you kind of implied that. I want to make that clear for your audience. That's no, but, but, but it's going to do it. But it could, it could have some very shocking effects. For example, oh, absolutely. Let's, say, let's say you're in Arizona or you're in Louisiana or Alabama making parts for an aircraft or a new tank or you're making supplies that actually go to the Navy or the troops. If you don't get your checks, you can't procure the material to actually supply the you know, the in-time production distribution line. So you have a major choke point in terms of even being able to supply current operations anywhere in the world. This is not a smart thing to do. But this is what they're going to do. And this is, again, consistent with two predictions that uh, were in my 2012 book as well as in my Barack Obama book. And you're thinking about it, looking at this, and again, uh, on the one hand, you can understand the logic that the Republicans thought that they had. On the other hand, if, if, if I was the president and had his views in terms of the economy and everything else, I'd say, well, I'm going to blame Congress. I've been, you know, I've blamed George Bush for a lot of things for years. Now I get to blame Congress because Congress is the one that came up with this fiscal cliff, and I'm going to let them deal with it. Or else they have to do what I say. And that looks like that's the direction that uh, is going to happen. Yeah, I think so. I think what will happen is he'll let Bonner try to protect the uh, in no increases in taxes. And they think that this would solve it. A little bit, yeah. Okay. And we're back with a uh, cameo appearance by Tim Alexander is on our uh, live stream panel. By the way, I'd like to invite you, Dr. Bob Teal, to join our live stream panel of people that can put up clips 
and talks on our live stream team. You can basically, if I send you an email, uh, you can actually update the Procaster and put up clips anytime, day or night. The uh, Tim has got some really amazing breaking stories that will fit in with your prophetic analysis of these books. Barack Obama uh, and the Destruction of America, the latest, and the one three years ago, The Secret Sect, and of course you published an amazing array of lists. So probably the most accurate list of prophetic anal analysis I've seen uh, ever. Uh, you know, just dealing with historical facts and prophecy. Tim, tell us the latest revelations. We talked about on the weekend about this expanding war between Syria, uh, Hezbollah, and Israel. This is really starting to take off, and they're yeah, taking well, the, the military they, they initiative and moving it. Yeah. Now, Dr. Bell, they had to wait until the American election was over because they, they saw Romney as being even more pro uh, Netanyahu. But uh, also, of course, the Israeli election is on, and this, this uh, acts as a type of trap for the Israelis, and they're taking some bait that's being dangled, uh, hook, line, and sinker. What's happening is the Syrian, Iranian, Hezbollah, Hamas axis has now taken the strategic initiative away from the Israeli NATO Gulf Cooperative Council uh, alliance. And how they've done this uh, is, is very key to this general Middle Eastern war, which is very close to breaking out. Uh, the war has been uh, uh, kind of presented, or the narrative is this is a Shiite versus Shunti uh, uh, thing. Well, yeah. okay, when uh, the Israelis go into Gaza, and uh, Netanyahu now is, uh, is formating uh, the, the final plans for, uh, to announce to 50 foreign ambassadors, uh, the uh, Israeli explanation of why they're about to reinvade the Gaza Strip. And this will be Operation uh, Cast Lead 2, and that uh, was widely criticized throughout the world, and it really inflamed the Arab streets. It, it, had it gone on much longer, it's quite possible there would have been a coup in one or more Arab countries. Uh, so what's going to happen is this is going to change the dynamics from Shiite versus Shunti to Jews versus Arabs, to Jews versus Muslims. Um, and, and so in other words, it's going to be like the old statement in the Middle East of me and my brother against my cousin, me oh, and my cousin yeah. against my enemy. Yeah. Now, and apparently the, uh, the ontogeny of that statement or that, it goes back well over 5,000 years ago to the Middle East, so it's not something new. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and, and as the, the Arab street sees... Uh, basically unarmed men, women, and children slaughtered as they were in the last go-round. Uh, it, it's, it's going to get inflamed. You very well could see uh, a military coup or coups taking place in some of the Gulf cooperative states. And at a minimum, the, the situation will be that uh, so uh, uh, politically charged that the governments will be very uh, uh, unable to comply with any Israeli request for uh, air flights over their territory, and I'm talking about Saudi Arabia and so forth. So anyway, this is going to change the, yes. this is changing so, the environment. It's Tim changing stayed. the environment in favor of, of mm. Syria. Syria right. and Iran knows that the war is, is rapidly yeah. coming. After we have a Sunni president elected, re-elected, re Obama, <laughs> who's very weak, we're, uh, I want to get your analysis while you're right here, Tim, from Dr. Bob, because this is important to kind of bring in the prophecy on this, the prophetic, because we have a situation now where we have the weakest president in American history that wants to build all our military, doesn't support Israel as an ally, and this is not a good situation. Well, you, you mentioned prophecy, and both in the 2012 book and in the Barack Obama Prophecy and Destruction, Destruction United States book, I specifically mentioned that Barack Obama is, was going to help form or help encourage the rise, I guess would be a better term, of a Middle Eastern power known as the King of the South. And we've seen that the last uh, couple of years, since, since the Arab Spring began uh, approximately two years ago, and I realize that wasn't the spring end, but the Tunisia event had already occurred. And then uh, a few months later, we go and we uh, stab our longtime ally, uh, Hassan Mubarak, in the back. And we've been supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, but now that didn't look politically correct, so we backed away from that slightly. But getting back to the main point, well, That's why they General are... Petraeus is being uh, hoisted on the petard, as they say, of the false idea that because he, he had an affair with his journal, with the 
uh, his uh, he's autobiography. Supposed to testimony. Yeah, he was supposed to yeah, testimony. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, no, no, he's about to do testimony about Benghazi. The fact is yes. that this entire thing smells to high heaven, and yet the journalists are going to have to face it post-election because well, the abominator lied all I call the liocracy, if, if, decided if, if, to, if, if, to if cover the whole thing. If went after the man for having an affair, they, they'd have to clean out the halls of Congress. Yeah, that, that was. Uh... Yeah, I know it's ridiculous. It's like, uh, I mean, the largest number of whorehouses on the planet is around Washington D.C. Well, I, I, I rather think Washington D.C. is a whorehouse. <laughs> well, it is, but I mean, they have they have they have the regular whorehouses, and then they have the the whorehouses of politics and lobbying. Well, well, getting back to the specific question you asked me, <laughs> yeah. uh, prophetically, um, we're, we're seeing a rise of uh, a Sunni confederation. Uh, the Shiites are being pushed. Push down, and we may see with, uh, as you mentioned before, if uh, Iran and Israel and Syria get into it, uh, I don't think Assad's got any compunction about launching chemical or biological weapons against. He's Israel. already said he would. In fact, his physical well, statement was, yeah, "I will not use it against my own citizens. Right. But if you invade my country or start an attack, I'm going to use these things." Right. And, and uh, yeah. And when and one thing we were talking about on the break. <clears throat> You know, uh, for your listeners who, who who follow biblical prophecy at all, you know, Isaiah uh, 17 talks about Damascus will cease to be a city and become a ruinous heap. Well, Damascus has never ceased to be a city, at least not since Isaiah wrote that. It's the oldest it's, continuously inhabited city with a name on earth, the oldest city on the planet. My brother went there one time uh, on business, and mm -hmm. when he landed, he got out, out of the plane and he looked around and he said, Oh, my Lord. Damascus is kind of in like a giant punch bowl with mountains all around it. And what that does, if you use a fairly large nuclear blast, as the blast expands, it hits the mountains, then it comes back. And it, it really amplifies uh, any atomic explosion over uh, Damascus. Yeah, well, the, that, that's what I felt for a long time will happen. Now, I didn't know, now, the one thing I don't know is actually when, but what's going on now still is a prelude. You know, Iran basically backed off a little bit on some of its nuclear ambitions. And I think part of it, and this is something, uh, Dr. Bill, you and I mentioned during the break, and that right. was they had felt that um, if Barack Obama was reelected, perhaps things might be a little easier for them. And if they, if they got caught too, too much a couple months before the election, you know, Israel would attack. Uh, Barack Obama was obligated, based on his statements, to support Israel. But now, yeah, now he's been he's been reelected. Uh, you know, as he says, he said to uh, uh, the former president of the Soviet Union, excuse me, Russia. You know, yeah, after my reelection, I'm going to have more flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> basically, I, I uh, so basically, by basically, who cares about the Congress? Who cares about the Senate? Harry Reid. I am now the dear, dear dictator of America with a K. It's funny, Red Dot is coming out this month. Not surprising after talking to Medvedev. Dr. Bob Thiel, that was a good uh, kind of a refocus. Uh, where can you take that? Uh, when you look at your book, Barack Obama, and and literally the prophetic, you've got to be head to smack on. I mean, if you were if you were playing darts, you'd be getting the championship trophy for throwing darts at the board and getting dead, you know, bullseyes all the time. Well, well, thank you very much. But as you as you mentioned before, one of the things I try to do is to pay attention to what's going on in the world. And actually, in the Barack Obama Prophecy and Destruction of the United States book. I have a section about uh, uh, Syria, Iran, as well as uh, you know Israel, and what's probably go what's going to be going on there. Now, one part that's kind of a wild card is that there are all kinds of predictions that uh, leaders have made, and the question is, will they do what they've said? And over in Iran, for example, who is Syria's closest ally, you've got the, their president uh, Ahmadinejad, whose term of office ends in 2013. And now, for your listeners. Starting in uh, let's, oh three days, it's the new Muslim year. The Islamic year begins again, and it will be an even-numbered year. 
the the Islamic calendar is different than the Roman calendar in terms of what year it is. Anyway, they have prophecies that one of their leaders, the Imam Mahdi, is supposed to rise up during an even numbered year. Which is and, next year, by the way, and this also which, fits which, in with your analysis. This week. This Very, week? Right. Okay, now yes. remember, now Ahmadinejad, he doesn't come up for election, I think, before March of the next year? Well, here's the problem. His term ends uh, around, I've read different conflicting information, but somewhere right. between June and November. Right. And <clears throat> he has said that, he was, that the Imam Mahdi is going to rise up before he's out of office. Okay, well, he's supposed to be out of office in, well, let's say less than a year, and he said this leader is supposed to be public. Now, he we can see that's going to happen. You can even just predict that somebody's going to rise to be the head of this caliphate of, of the of the Muslim Brotherhood, which, by the way, was founded in London, England, not in the Middle East, in 1928 by Muslim Masons. There's more Masons that are Muslim than Catholics or Protestants or any other faith, including uh, high-level Tibetan monks. There's more Masons that are Muslim than any other group on earth. Well, anyway, getting back to, to what they've said in the past, the uh, the Ayatollah over there has also said that the Mahdi is around, and he's the reason why they don't fear the United States. They say that uh, they're going to win. Uh, they, the impression I get from them is they believe that uh, 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 their leader is on their side, and so called their their God is supposedly on their side, and so they're going to use EMP weapons, electromagnetic pulse bombs, or something, supposedly knock the U.S. out. Uh, Put by the, by the way, Iran's already been doing it. I've got the actual reports sent to me that they're putting up missiles at 80 to 120,000 uh, feet. Oh, yeah, they're, they're uh, trying. They, well, they hope they're going to succeed. They're not going they've to already, succeed. They, they, but they they've, already par they've already partially tested them off the coast of Iran already. Yes. And know they yes, can do an EMP ago. pulse. Yeah. And we have all this intelligence in the regular media. People Google it up. You know, Iran testing EMP weapons. Yes. They have all these ships out about 100, 200 miles off the coast, and you can get a radius of 1,500 miles where you can literally knock out electronics. Now, they expect it's going to knock everything out and fire the power grid and people's laptops and iPads. They're in for a shock. Right. Uh, the most sensitive thing, of course, that's likely to go down, at least temporarily, will be the power transformers for the power grid, which these idiots in Congress and Senate didn't do. And it was Lisa Murkowski, the rhino Republican uh, senator from Alaska, that blocked it three years ago. So, you know, this is really stupid, and uh, as, you know, Forrest Gump says, stupid is as stupid does, America better get its act together, and we've got the, uh, what I call the moron-in-chief, the liocracy of Obama and a bunch of uh, Chicago mobsters running the country into the ground. It's really not good. Well, anyway, in terms of the, pro the prophetic side and how this ties in with the book, etc., uh, the, you know, one of the things we talked about during the break was if, uh, you know, Syria and Israel keep going at it, uh, Israel doesn't want to put up with Syria, and Syria, you know, the, the president of Syria, Assad, he said, he said last week, he said he's not leaving. Okay, he's going to stay there basically over his dead uh, body, uh, which which Unless he leaves for, feet first, because they've, I've got my sources that said the British SAS special forces in America are assembling special teams to go in and quote, and this is the reports I have to assassinate him. They're not going in there to talk or sit down and have tea uh, in Damascus. They're going in there to kill him. So well, they, he's going to, he, they want him to quit feet first. Well, he doesn't want to do that, which is one of the reasons why he, uh, if, he, if, he if he feels his back is up against the wall too much, he's going to, he will launch his chemical and or biological weapons. And once he does that, uh, presuming he does that, Israel will not put up with it, and they'll probably launch a nuke. You know, we talked during the break, Isaiah 17 yeah. talks about Damascus becoming a ruinous heap, right. and that's... That's probably uh, how it's going to happen. Coming. It could happen other ways. I mean, there's, there's still a couple other possibilities. Yeah, we don't know the timing, but we know it's coming real fast. And so what we are seeing, though, in the U.S., you know, the reason I wrote uh, one of the reasons I wrote Barack Obama prophecy and destruction of the United States is I felt Barack Obama was going to get reelected. I wasn't 100 percent certain. Okay, so I'm not going to say that you know I had thus said the Lord God didn't tell me that. Yeah. But I felt that right. that was the case for lots of reasons, including you know what happened in the elections last week in terms of uh, what was called um, social or moral issues, uh, like the same-sex marriage thing uh, passed in three states and did not get banned in a fourth one. And, you know, Pre President Obama, when he was running for office, indicated he was uh, in favor of the Defense of Marriage Act, but then, oh, oh about a year or two ago, he said, well, you know, we're, like gonna, we're not really going to defend that. So when I saw the, the, the moral landscape in the United States going in that direction, I felt that there was a very high probability that Barack Obama would get reelected, and of course he did. Yeah. And 
you know, it was like we were talking at the beginning of the, the hour. When I first said things that were in my 2012 and the Rise of the Secret Sec book, one one radio host uh, called me a traitor for saying such terrible things could happen to the United States until they all started, until more and more of them did, and then she realized yeah, it was true. Yeah, until they actually started happening, right? Yeah, and now if you if you read, uh, uh, there, there, you know, if you go out, you go on the internet, you can read pro and uh, anti Obama stuff. If you go to the people who are not fans of Obama, you're going to see a lot more these days people saying something they didn't say when he got in, which is, hey, wait a second. The direction of the country is not going the way it did historically. <laughs> you know, this is yeah. a definite shift. We've had a, a polar shift the last four yeah, you years. You actually have to look at what Obama is, does, not what he says. Cause Correct. What he says is actually what we call moderate policy that might even get any other Republican elected. What he does is extremely far left. As soon as he gets elected, he says, we're immediately signing the Small Arms Treaty. We're going to sign the Rights of the Child, the, the Law of the Seas Treaties. We're going to actually go for your guns for semiotic weapons in the whole country. I mean, trying to do that in Texas, Arkansas, and uh, Oklahoma, come on now. Uh, Montana, where they actually passed laws that the federal government has no right to even put their foot on the ground and tell us who can't have guns. Uh, no, we're 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 already having four states that are passing laws to get out of Obamacare, saying we don't have the, they don't have the right with the Tenth Amendment to force it on the population in our states. I think we're going to start seeing the dissolution of the federal republic under Obama. I think the republic is dying now. Oh, I've 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 thought it was uh, when I wrote <laughs> 2012 book three years ago, and and again that's why again I wrote the Barack Obama Prophecy and Destruction of the United States book, and. Again, you, uh, you mentioned before, you know, the listeners can go to Amazon at Bra or they can go to BarackObamaProphecy.com, or if they want the 2012 book, they can go to uh, thesecretsec.com. But right. for those who, you know, don't have all these resources at their hand, uh, if, if, by the way, if any of your listeners have Kindle, they can get the Barack Obama book for $2.99. It's a 160 page yeah. book for three bucks. I mean, you know, I love second. Kindle. I have an iPad and I have a Kindle. And I've got the older style kind of black and white Kindle there, amazing. Yeah. And uh, your book is remarkable. And you, you mentioned a number of chapters, Barack Obama and the Hebrew Prophecy, Barack Obama, Islamic Prophecy in 2013 to 2015, is Barack Obama the Antichrist? And what I'd like to just circumscribe, and I'll see your opinion on this, there's two major players in the world, two major players, the United States and its allies, which are basically the British, NATO, etc. And on the other side, there's Russia and China and the Islamic nations on the other side. So we have a bilateral world. And uh, you, the best way to describe Obama is almost like a pseudo-religious leader in a sense, because he's to the leftists, he's like their messiah for gay marriage, for alternative lifestyles, uh, for anything goes policies, and for Marxist communism. And uh, so I call him a false prophet, okay, and, you know, in a broader term. Uh, and uh, there's going to be uh, the other side, the Russians, the Muslims, the rise of the uh, king of the south in China, all on the other side, vying for power in this world, this new world order. When we come back, we'll do some more analysis of this remarkable book and 17 Reasons Why Barack Obama is Apocalyptic, and much more. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and um, yeah, you alluded on the break to a comment by Sean Hannity, and I, I like uh, Fox News at times. They make some prescient statements, and sometimes, accidentally, it's almost prophetic. Uh, Hannity's comment was that uh, he thought that maybe this was a judgment on America. I know that it was weather manipulated, but I do believe it is a judgment. America is, woe to you, Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and of abominations of the earth. Obama nations, that word now. And I believe that uh, it may have been a major tipping factor along with the other issues. We know that married women supported Romney. We know that, that people over 44 supported Romney, 70 plus percent. We know that Hispanics, 60 per, 71 percent supported Obama, although most of them are Catholics, and they know he was forcing a mandate to cause abortion to be on demand. <clears throat> we know 60 percent of Catholics supported Obama. Where was their spiritual brains? Uh, if you don't think America is under judgment, you're not smelling the coffee. We're in a lot of trouble. This is exactly like ancient Israel, and America is going down a pathway of destruction. And your book is one of the most important people need to read, and not only just read them, get their Bible, match it up, and then pray and repent. Our personal repentance, our national repentance, we need to be extremely vigilant. We need to, in 
two years, completely take over the Senate. We need to impeach this maniac for what he did in Benghazi. And by the way, it's one of the first times I saw the near-dead Senator McCain actually come to life. If he was that lively back in 2008, he probably would have got elected. But he's so damn mad over Obama's cover-up of him in Benghazi, I actually saw blood pumping through his eyes and his frontal lobes, and I said, this guy's hot. And they're going to have a group of senators and these congressmen, and that includes, by the way, even Dianne Feinstein and Democrats. They're mad about four Americans dying. There's a lot of really ugly stuff that the state... Department and Secretary of State and Obama covered up in this issue, and it's only the tip of a very giant, ugly iceberg. Yeah, what's been going on? See, most people don't seem to realize it, partially because with the debt, with the this, with the financial issues that we've been kind of covering up. You know, over in Greece, they've been having riots because they're talking about cutting some social programs. And again, with the fiscal cliff based on the Budget Act of 2011. It's not just the military that's going to get cut. Certain social It'll be entitlements. Yeah, so Obama be cut pretends he's going to give a pot in every ch a chicken in every pot, and he's going to pay pe people, give people Obama phones and so on. I'm sorry, you people that figured Obama was going to fix this, because he wouldn't put in Glass-Steagall to stop speculative banking on commodities. He wouldn't in properly put infrastructure. He knows that we could be energy independent, so we wouldn't be beholden to the Middle East or or, or borrowing money from China. But this this lackey for the international bankers is putting us in a position where we're going to have a financial crash which will not just hit the military the social entitlements will be literally it will be uh disemboweled let's put it that way eventually we're going to see more riots in the streets one of the things i put in my 2012 book uh three years ago is that we would have uh squatter rebellions which we had the occupy movement but wait until there are real entitlement cuts <laughs> wait until other things uh start to happen um, so those things are, are starting to line up to happen, and a lot of people do not realize basically by the Federal Reserve decided to start to print about $50 billion a month indefinitely uh, to keep the U.S. economy going. And that's called quantitative easing three for people who want to look that up on the Internet. Or yeah, which, by the way, is, is, is buying mortgage-backed security, which means my home, which is mortgaged. And most people don't realize most of the homes in America now are underwater. They're actually below the value of their valuation. Uh, of four years ago, and they have lost their equity in the home. Well, and it's worse so, than just that. Yeah, they're buying treasury bills. Okay, that means all the government does is saying, okay, I'm going to. Bernanke can say, okay, I'm going to print fifty billion dollars, and U.S. government, you just give me a treasury bill that says I owe you fifty billion dollars. Right. And it, it's so. It's not just. Mo it's much of this is not right. Much well, of this is not actually backed by anything. And I know what you're well, saying what this being backed by is even was. Well, it's back with funny money. It's basically something. smoke and mirrors. Here, here, here's what's going to happen. We are in what I call the economic phase of World War III or the War of Armageddon. Now, these things take years, just like in World War uh, I. It started back in the 1880s and 1890s. It didn't happen in, in 1914. It started many years before, and the so-called false dialectic that the shooting of the Archduke Ferdinand was the cause is just a lie by historians to try to tell you it started off because it's very, you know, uh, how can I say it, uh, non-important person was, was knocked off, okay? Mm -hmm. What's really going on is we're in a currency war with China right now. We're in a trade war with, the, with China and these Asian countries. We're in a war between uh, the federal government trying to tax transnational corporations and, and, and can't get the money back out from them. And now what they've decided is that we will collapse the world economy through debt and uh, go from 87% of the world currency to maybe 95%, and when China and these other countries choke on our debt, because they're choking on it, then we will create a biometric world currency as a replacement to stop terrorism, to stop people that have so damn much money they can buy up all commodities on Earth, because that's what's happening. Commodity prices are going skyrocketing because there's, so, there's oceans of money out there ready to buy up everything that's available. Well, and that's you know, what's really bad about this. Well, as, uh, and for, for your listeners who uh, may have less than... Not a lot of interest in prophecy. You might be interested in one thing. I was talking to somebody once about a particular prophecy, and he was uh, he was Catholic, but he didn't. He was uh, what, what do you call him? Cafeteria Catholic. He didn't really believe it. I don't think. Okay, right. he just okay. He didn't believe his religion, and I so I had him read suffering from the Book of Habakkuk, and it, it said, "Well, woe to him and loads up pledges are dead unto yourself. 
will not your creditors rise up against you suddenly and you become uh, destroyed? And he said to me, well, when was this written? I, I told him, I said, I think it has to do with what's going on in the United States. You know, we, you know, we got all the foreign creditors. <laughs> it was written. Said, when was this written? I said, 2,500 years ago. He said, really? <laughs> And by you're the way, comedian too, right? right. Uh, uh, no, I was not. I was dead serious. And, and by the I way, know you are, but but it's the truth. The thing is that people are so uninformed, so ignorant, they don't understand these truths are immutable truths that will still apply a hundred thousand years or a million years from now. And America, basically, and I know this is a fact, part of the reason why we handed over ninety-five to ninety percent of the oil from Iraq to the Chinese and China oil company is part of the deal to continue buying our treasury notes from China. We have an interlocking debt monster that's about to eat us alive. And Obama is going to feed that monster more rather than deciding to put Glass-Steagall, have the Treasury coin U.S. money, get actual U.S.-based credit, get us off the energy monster from the Middle East and elsewhere by making us energy independent. And then we have industry come back here and deal with proper trade tariffs against these countries that are doing industrial espionage like China. Then we can deal bilaterally with nations, not through the World Trade Organization, not through UN or the United Nations, not through the treaties like the Law of the Seas Treaty, United Ch Nations uh, Rights of the Child, or the Small Arms Treaty. This is global governments, and he wants to convert America to just a place on the wall called world governance, with America no longer being a sovereign republic, but just a place to hang your hat called America. That's what he wants to do. Well, talking about the fiscal cliff I mentioned before, the Congressional Budget Office actually says that if the uh, taxes go up, and if all these cuts go in, this will trigger another recession in the United States. This is from... Uh, Why are they allergic partisan? to the D word? Why are they allergic to the D word? You know, The fact is, if you have three negative quarters, this is a definition in economics 101, three negative quarters of growth means you're in a depression. We have 1.4% growth rate now, which is what's called the lift velocity for the economy. If it gets less than 1.4%, the airplane of the economy starts to fall out of the sky, which means everything starts to fly apart by centrifugal force. And people don't realize that. We are close. The fiscal cliff isn't just, oh, gee, we're not going to have uh, food stamp programs or supplies for our military or checks for our deployed military overseas. No, no. We're talking about... Real catastrophe. States and cities going bankrupt. Uh, government checks going basically NSF, not sufficient funds. Uh, real disaster almost immediately. And that means that Obama will probably, if this fiscal cliff gets way out of control, kind of expect it in basically three phases. First phase is Obama and Bonner before Christmas will say, we're Obama clause and we're Bonner clause. And we're going to come up with Harry, Harry Reid clause, and we're going to come together, and we're going to collaborate across the divide, and we're going to come up with a plan that will make your Christmas nice in 2012. Don't worry about the end of the world. And that will, when they really take away the, uh, we call the caps, we'll have people over, say, 250,000, they'll have caps in their homes. They'll try to, if they can't, take away the, the, uh, the write-offs for churches and charities. They'll try to do all kinds of nasty things. And that will only give us a few months of reprieve before all of a sudden they realize we need to raise the national debt again or borrow money from China or Saudi Arabia, and then all hell is going to break loose. Well, as I, I said, you mentioned before in my book, uh, uh, Barack Obama, Prophecy of Destruction of the United States, I have 17 reasons why Barack Obama is apocalyptic, and we're seeing events line up. Absolutely. You've done an amazing job in this. And well, unfortunately, you. <laughs> you've got a well-polished crystal ball, let's put it that way. <laughs> Actually, you read the Bible and you have uh, two clues to look at history and look at it soberly like a mathematician. Amazing. Uh, we need to get back on soon, Bar Dr. Bob Teal. And uh, again, uh, go to the websites, the rise, the rise of the Secret Sect and Barack Obama Prophecy and the Destruction of America with the Abominator firmly put back into place. Literally, God help us because we're under judgment.